Hi, my name is Raj Ayer and I'm an immigration attorney with many years of experience. I work at the offices of law I work at the law offices of Carl Schusterman. And I'm Carl Schusterman. I'm an immigration attorney for over 32 years. I was a former prosecutor with the Immigration and Naturalization Service, and our firm is a six attorney firm that specializes in immigration. Um, Raj is going to ask me certain questions about 245i, and I'm going to answer them. Mr. Schusterman, what is 245i? Well, 245i is part of a law that Congress passed back in 1994 and renewed again in three years later. And it says that if you enter the United States illegally, or you overstate your visa, or you work without authorization, that if you qualify for benefits under 245I, you don't have to leave the United States. You can adjust your status and get your green card in the United States. Who qualifies for the benefits under 245I? Well, it's a little bit complicated, but the, when they first passed the law, you had to have either a labor certification or you had to have an immigrant visa petition, usually an I-140 or an I-130, and it had to be filed before the 14th of January 1998. Then when they extended the law, they said it had to be filed before April 30th, 2001, but only if you were in the United States the day that the President signed the law. And so the President signed that law on December 21st, 2000. So they added an extra requirement if your uh, papers were filed between January 14, 98 and April 30, 2001. By the way, you also uh, have to pay a $1,000 fine if you're going to get benefits under 245i. Immigration office says that your petition has to be approvable when filed. What does that mean? Well, you know, it, frankly, it means two different things depending on whether it was a labor certification or whether it was an immigrant petition. Uh, a labor certification, pretty much if it's signed and submitted to the Labor Department, as long as the government can't show there's fraud in the case, it is approvable when filed. Uh, even if the employer later withdraws it or closes up or whatever, fires you. Uh, but when it comes to the I-140 or the I-130, if that's denied, they're probably going to say it was not approvable when filed. How long does the benefit of 245i last? Well, that, that's really good. It, it lasts your whole lifetime. So if you get 245i benefits because of some petition that was filed in 1990 and then you leave the United States and you come back in 2010 or 2011 even though it's 20 years later you're still 245i qualified so it's really a lifetime benefit. So if my father applies for a petition for me in 1995 and then he dies now can my employer apply for me? And yes. Can I get the benefit? Yes, yes you can. Uh, the, uh, the thing that's good about 245i is it covers all employment, uh, uh, employment-based visas, family-based visas, even, even diversity visas, the diversity lottery visa. So if your father applies for you in, in you know, sometime before 1998 or before 2001, and then later you qualify by a different relative, through your job, or if you're in one of the lottery countries and you win the lottery, you're 245i for all those purposes. If I qualify for 245i, do my wife and child also qualify? Uh, yes, they, yes, they do. Uh, again, you have to make certain distinctions, and we, we do have those on our website, but just to summarize, if when your father files the petition, you're already married and you have kids, your wife and kids are 245i just like you are. So if something terrible happens and you get divorced and she marries somebody else um, and she wants to get a green card through the, uh, you know, on her own, not through you, well, she's 245 eligible. Same thing with your kids. Let's say they turn 21 and it would just take a long time for them to get a green card through you. They get a green card through the lottery or their job. They can get. 245i benefits and adjust their status in the United States. 
But let's say when your father petitioned for you, you weren't married and you didn't have kids, but later on you got married and had kids. Then there's a different rule. Those people can qualify for 245i, but only if you're the principal applicant. So if your wife that you married two years after your father petitioned for you divorces you, she's out of luck. She can't get anything through 245i, because she can only get it through you. And the, uh, you know, so after, we, we call them after acquired spouses and after acquired kids, and they can only get the 245 benefits if you're the principal, and they're either accompanying you, which means getting green cards at the same time, or they're following to join. Thank you, Mr. Schusterman. You're welcome.